Hi, Greg Gimlick here from Model Aviation Magazine. Welcome to the shop. This morning, we want to take a look at the new Spectrum IX-14 transmitter. Now this builds upon the foundation laid with the original IX-12. It went from the IX-12 to the IX-20 with extremely expanded capabilities and at a price point that was much higher than the 12 because it's a pro-level radio. The IX-14 fills that gap in between. Took everything from the IX, a few issues with and corrected them. Uh, gives you the functionality of the IX-20 at a significantly reduced price point uh, with many of the same functions and the programmability is just phenomenal. Let's take a quick look. It comes in this custom foam pad or case and you know cases are a subjective matter. You may like it, you may not like it, but it offers custom fit and extreme protection to your radio. When you first get it, of course you get a quick start guide, uh, some safety notes on lithium batteries and charging and updating and that sort of thing, and a sheet of decals. All comes uh, in the case. It also comes with a orange protective storage bag. If you're not going to put it back in the case, you got it in the shop, you want to protect it from dust, you can put it in there. Uh, like all the Spectrum radios, it comes with uh, its own carrying strap. This is the IX-14, it's labeled on there. It comes with a USB-C charging cord. This is great because that's kind of where the, the industry is moving in terms of USB right now. So this is a C cord and one of the nice features on that cord is it has a magnetic mount adapter that goes in the back of your radio and we'll give you a close-up of that in a little bit. But rather than have to plug the cord all the way into the radio, the magnetic adapter just snaps it on there. The nice thing about it is if it's on your bench and you snag the cord, it pops off without launching your brand new radio across the shop. So we're going to take a quicker, a closer look at the radio itself, go over some of the features. Let me reposition the camera so you can get a good look at this radio and we'll be right back. All right, before we, we do that, let me just back up a minute and go over some of the specifications in case you're not familiar with it yet. It's a full 2.4 gigahertz DSMX protocol radio with 14 channels. Frame rates are selectable between 11 and 22, and you've got model memories 250 internal. When you put the optional SD card in the back, you're pretty much unlimited with how many radio or airplanes, helicopters, whatever you're going to put in. One of the great improvements of this radio over the original IX-12, I feel, is the larger color touch screen that's just a, a full beautiful HD screen and, and the response time is very fast. If you've used the IX-20, you're going to be used to it, but if you come from the 12 to this, you're going to notice the response time when you select something is way faster. And while we're on that, let's talk about the elephant in the room, boot times. People talked about the slower boot times, the IX-12, and they're correct. It was much slower than this. This, I've timed it about 20 times. It varies between 57 seconds and 64 seconds to fully boot, ready to fly. So you're talking a minute. So they really fixed that. Uh, of course, you've got telemetry, the SD card. It's got Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth. It comes with a 10,500 milliamp lithium-ion battery pack. This thing will run forever, it seems. Wireless training function. And the radio itself weighs 32 ounces, so right at 2 pounds. Uh, some of the other features of the radio itself. You've got nine predefined mixes, but there are 16 free programmable mixes. So you've got plenty of options there for your mixing for whatever type of aircraft or use you tend to use it for. you got four sequencers. If you want to sequence your gear doors so they open, gear comes down, doors come closed, you can do that through the programming on the IX-14. Ten different flight modes, video transmitter control for those of you doing a lot of the FPV and video work. 
Uh, it's got a serial port on the back for Crossfire, Crossfire 2 compatibility, and also can provide a 9.5 volt power supply for those, those extra functions that you're going to use. Uh, it's compatible with all the smart technology on your telemetry, and when you go to have it do commands or, or warnings, voice alerts on switches, etc., you can just type in what you want it to say. No more scrolling through hundreds and hundreds of sound files, although that's there, and you can do that if you prefer that method. I find it very quick just to type in what I want it to say and have it go to there. It's got a, a usable QWERTY keyboard that comes up on the screen, and we'll take a look at that in a little bit. Also, it has speech-to-text capability if you plug in a wired headset to the back with a microphone. That way it'll work. It does not have a microphone built in, and to answer some questions, it does not have a camera like the iX20 does. You have to import your own uh, JPEG files for whatever custom model picture you want to use. Uh, also, if you get the optional little dongle here, this plugs into your laptop. If you want to fly a real flight simulator and use your radio, you just bind it to this like you would any other uh, airplane, and you're off to the races. So it works great. I've used it a bunch on there. Uh, really like it. <laughs> and. You know, you can reset it. Does all the functions that your real flight radio transmitter had uh, that was wired. So it really makes it easy uh, to answer some questions that I know will come up. It's based on an Android system. Think of it as two different things. You've got your Android tablet, let's call it, in the background, and your Airware software runs on top of that. Now. To dispel a rumor right from the start, if for whatever reason Android were to crash, the tablet side were to crash, no, you will not lose control of your airplane. The RF is a separate function of the radio. You'll continue to fly, you'll lose your callouts and switch callouts and that sort of thing, but your airplane will continue to fly no problem. So I want to kill that rumor. I don't know how these things start, but they get a life of their own. Based on the Android 11, it's uh, also the firmware is 3.02.38 right now. Uh, being a new radio, there could be an update at any time. They usually will, you know, come up with some little minor update just to tweak a couple little things. So, let's reposition. Let's take a look at some of the screens and functionality of the radio. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Got things repositioned, so hopefully you can get a good view of the radio itself. We'll look at some of the screens, the functions. And, uh, and just some of the special features that I, I find I like about the radio. I'll give you a, a good look at it. Uh, it was asleep in between flying sessions. I don't turn it off all the way, although it only takes a minute to boot back up. You just a single tap the way I've got mine set up. Choose sleep mode, and it'll turn the RF off and, and all that. And uh, A single tap, and it comes back up, and you're ready to go. In terms of battery life, if you're concerned about that, I've had the radio about a week and a half, and during that time, at one point, I let it run for three days without ever turning it off. Uh, one of those days was a full flying day. I went out and test flew a bunch of airplanes. And after three days, I still had enough. I'd have felt comfortable going to fly again. So hey, battery life is just not going to be an issue with this radio. Not that I can see. Now, if you're using your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all those things in the background, that's going to contribute to it. Well, I'm on the subject of Bluetooth. The nice thing about Bluetooth is, if you are hard of hearing or you just want to hear it in your ears, if you've got a set of Bluetooth earbuds or hearing aids that are Bluetooth, you can connect it and have all the call-outs and everything come right into your ears. It's really nice. The background noise doesn't bother you at the field and that sort of thing. So, in, that, in terms of that, the Bluetooth is kind of nice. Wi-Fi is something I leave turned off 99% of the time, unless I'm doing a backup to my cloud or, or downloading a, an image or something to the radio in the shop. Uh, I just leave the Wi-Fi turned off. I use it as a straight-up radio. I imported 36 models from my NX-10. Everything came across, all the switch callouts, everything came across just fine. I've test flown, I think, 19 of them uh, without any issues. 
you know, I tweak things as I go, change some sounds because I can do it easily now. But other than that, everything is set. Right now, uh, if you look at the screen, let me zoom in a little bit here if I can without confusing things too much. Okay, this one, I've got a video test model set up. I don't want to get in here doing a video, punch a bunch of buttons, and end up messing up an airplane that I fly. So this is a test model set up, but it will show you some of the functionality of the whole thing. Now, you've got your three sections across the bottom here. you got model adjust, model setup, system settings. System settings is exactly what you think. Product information, manual. 300 and some odd page manual. You don't get a hard copy, but it's on here. And you can pull that up just by touch. Each page fills a screen. Very readable. Easy access at the field. If there's something you forget how to do, you can get in there and do it. Your calibration for your controls, your touch sensitivity. You got capacitive touch switches that you can set up. And you calibrate how sensitive they are to the touch. So that's that. Then model setup is where you would start and you set up your frame rate, all the things, your aircraft type, and it's all the things you expect to see. Then you do a long touch, turns everything off, you select your wing, all that sort of thing, just like you're used to on the Spectrum programming. So, all the different things, audio events, flight mode setups, everything you're used to setting up on your Spectrum radio is right here. The difference is a quick touch and you're at it. Once your airplane is set up, I haven't put a photo in here. You'd have a custom photo, a timer. I can put something else down in this widget. And then all your trim settings, I choose to have those selected to show. Model adjust, pretty much what you'd expect. Servo setups, this is great. It's all on one screen. Everything is there. you got reverse, travel, sub-trim, speed, absolute travel, names, and balance. So rather than scrolling and clicking and scrolling and clicking, you just touch on what you want. Now I'm in reverse mode right now. So here, say I want to reverse. You just all of a sudden you get a warning. Call it confirm throttle reverse. Are you sure? Yes, no. Well, no, I don't want to do that. So it kind of helps you protect yourself from doing something you didn't want to do. Travel, same thing. It comes in here. It gives you a depiction of all the different throttles. And over here is a uh, number representing the percentage, how far it's going to go, and it defaults to 100%. Now, it's got extended travel just like all the Spectrum radio, so you can set those wherever you want. Some trim, speeds, absolute travel, so the adjustability is all there. Throttle cut, I've got mine set up, so... Motor arm, throttle cut, motor arm, throttle cut. So... All those sorts of things are easy to do. Everything is right there. Dual rates and expo. Just like all the others, you get a nice screen. Shows what you want to set up. Whether you want it on a switch. It shows your aileron channel. You can change the elevator or rudder right back. And anything you change. So, say, you know, you want to do the, the uh, expo. Let's just do expo just for fun. They're locked together right now. So when I change one, they'll both change. See how that, you just do your slider, and it'll change that curve however you want. And once you're done, you hit OK, it saves it, boom, you can do your other surfaces. So, all that is there, it's just very easy to do. Now, I mentioned capacitive touch. Let me zoom this out just a little bit if I can. Whoop, wrong way. Now, capacitive touch... You can argue whether that's something you want, you don't want. The thing is, it's there if you want to use it. If you don't want to use it, don't. What's nice is, if you've got a lot of switches, which all of our radios now do, and you're flying and you're busy, and you're a little hazard, haggled, whatever, and you're not sure you're touching the right switch. So this is my mode switch up here. And I can not look at it, touch it. Normal mode. Okay, normal I'm in normal mode. Mode. normal mode. Now, I flipped it up one. Stunt one. Now I'm in stunt one. So if I'm flying along, I think, oh, it's touchy. Stunt one. I can touch that button without having to look at it. It tells stunt me, oh, one. I'm in stunt, stunt one. one. I want normal. normal mode. Now I'm in normal mode. So you can adjust the sensitivity. So if you just accidentally kind of brush against it, it doesn't, you know, 
talk to you all the time. So it's just something you have to play with. I think it's kind of neat. I'm getting used to it. I'm finding uses for it. So, uh, again, all the, the normal two position, three position, three position, three position, of course your dials, and the same thing over on this side. So all that. One of the things they did change over the old one, they went like they did with some of the later ones. You have a, a strap, two positions to hang the strap. So you can get, you know, however you want your radio to hang, the CG, a little up, a little level, whatever, is all right there. Let's take a look at the back again. And if I can get it up here, and hopefully it'll focus up, you can see. Here's my USB, and I've got the magnetic adapter in there right now. There's my micro SD card. This is my headphone jack. If I want to do the voice to text, I can plug in a headphone with a mic on it and do that, or just a wired headset and do that. And then you've got your serial port that we discussed earlier for all your other flexibility. Uh, battery compartments here, and that's the 10,500 milliamp battery. So, uh, grips, sliders down here on the back. I've got my slider set up for volume on one side. They're pretty stiff, and I like that because I don't accidentally hit it and turn the, the volume down. So of course, naturally, sticks are all adjustable for height. I'm kind of a modified pincher uh, when I fly, and I've got them adjusted to where I'm very comfortable with it. So, really, that's about all there is to it. If, if you want to adjust the tension, they're uh, hall sensor gimbals, and if you want to adjust the tensions on them, there's little rubber plugs here on all of them. You just pop those out, fill up screwdriver in there, make an adjustment. So no more having to tear the grips off, open the back of a radio and that sort of thing. All you have to do is pop those plugs out, adjust it to get it to where you want it, and that. I fold the antenna down, it goes in my the case that I use. Then, if I were to put it to sleep, say I'm going to, you know, sit around and drink coffee for a bit. Mine, I single tap, I turn the RF, turn the screen, hold that. It tells me there's an SD card in there, so it doesn't really completely save all the power it could. Do that, and it's asleep. So, that's it right now on a new iX14. I hope we got some of the main points of the radio across here. I hope I gave it to you in a clear manner you can understand. If not, there will be a link down there you can contact us. We'll try to clear up any questions. Full review coming in the magazine shortly. I think you'll enjoy it. I'm really happy with the 14. I like the feel of it. I like the weight of it. Everything about it I like. The iX20 is an incredible radio. I like the feel of this one because it's a subjective thing. And this feels good to me. I don't need all the functions. I don't need 20 channels. A substantially lower price point. The 14 fills the bill for most of us. So, Greg Gillick from Model Aviation, thanks for coming by. We'll see you at the field.